Hey folks, John with KidsTropicals.com, bringing you something a little different today. Probably shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I got sent an article from Jim Snyder. The article is called Fish in Tanks, No Thanks, and it's on the PETA website. Uh, I'm going to put the link to the uh, article down below so you can read it for yourself, and perhaps you should read the article and then come back and watch this video. But uh, I wanted to talk about something real quick before I go on with this article. Um, I mentioned PETA in a, in a video way back uh, where I said I have a love of animals but I am not a card carrying PETA member. Now what I meant by that was I, I am an animal lover. We have a lot of different animals, dogs, rabbits, fish, and I believe that animals should be treated fairly. I believe that they should be raised in an environment that's suitable for that animal. And I do believe that animals that are kept in captivity are kept better than if they were in the wild and we're going to get into that later on but when i said i'm not a card carrying PETA member what i was getting at was that i don't go to extremes now i know PETA as a whole isn't an extreme group but some are and some of them will go to the extremes of trying to get businesses shut down i've had it happen to friends of mine they'll do a lot of crazy things not the entire organization but some people within that organization will do that. And so when I said I'm not a card carrying PETA member, that's what I was talking about. I'm not an extremist, but I definitely do believe that there is a right way and a wrong way to raise captive animals. Now, to talk a little bit about what this article is, uh, first of all, I'm not going to take little snippets and read you those little snippets and comment on those. I'm not going to do that because what I don't want to be accused of is you're only selecting small portions of the article to support your argument. I'm not going to do that. Uh, instead, I would rather you go read the article yourself and then come back and you, if you care about what I have to say, then come back and listen to what I have to say. Um, but the article is basically talking about uh, where fish come from, uh, the fact that the saltwater hobby, 95% uh, of the fish, corals, anemones, all of those good things, crustaceans, they're all pulled from the ocean. They are wild caught. We all know that. Uh, there is not a whole lot of tank raised stuff when it comes to saltwater fish, but um, freshwater, that's that's completely different, but you know, we're not getting into that. They, they talk a little bit about the, um, the freshwater farms, and they talk about things that the farms do, like uh, injecting them with hormones and dyes to affect their colors and make them glow in the dark and all of that. I can't say I disagree with them when it comes to that. Uh, the glowfish fad kind of came and went pretty fast uh, when people realized what was going on and why their fish were glowing in the dark. They didn't really like that too much, so that's a, that's a fad that kind of came and went real fast. We didn't even do it in here because we knew it wasn't going to last long. Um, so I can't say that I disagree with them in this. Um, but then they get down to the bottom and they get to the what you can do to fix this problem. And the very first sentence is, please don't support the tropical fish trade by purchasing fish. Uh, their alternative to purchasing fish would be to download a screensaver and have that be your hobby rather than buying fish and keep them in an aquarium. Um, I, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. Uh, download a screensaver and that'll get you what you want with your hobby that that just doesn't make any sense to me uh, but they also talk about um, if you do have fish already these are the things that you can do to make sure that your fish are well kept and the things that they bring up are are right I mean they talk about water parameters they talk about the conditions they talk about tank size they talk about temperature all of these things that we all know are important to keeping fish um, but then they get down to the bottom. And this, this is the only sentence from the article that I'm going to read. And, you know, call it what you want. But this, this is the one that bothers me. Um, most fish enjoy companionship. If you have a single fish, check with friends and neighbors to find another loner to adopt. But don't support the fish trade by going to a dealer. So basically what they're telling you to do is go to your neighbor, convince your neighbor that he is wrong for keeping fish in an aquarium and that he should give that fish to you and you can be a better keeper of that fish it's just absurd uh, they also talk about uh, in this list of things that you can do I, I it would take me a while to find the sentence they talk about go to your fish store and get advice 
but don't buy anything from those fish stores. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's absurd. I'm not saying the article is absurd. They bring up a lot of really good valid points in here, but some of the parts of it are absurd. I'm going to let you read those for yourself. Um, but enough about the article. Let me talk to you about my feelings for animals kept in captivity, because that's really what this article is about. Okay, so I'm not talking about every single member of the PETA organization, but a lot of them do believe that animals in captivity is wrong and they should be left in the wild to frolic in the pastures and climb trees and swim through the rivers and do what they want to do because that's what nature intended for them. And my argument is that animals that are kept in captivity, I do believe should be kept properly, but animals that are kept in captivity are kept better and they have far less to deal with and worry about than if they were in the wild. Now, of course, we're going to talk primarily about fish. And of course, we're going to talk primarily about African cichlids. If an African cichlid was in the wild, what would that fish have to deal with? They would have to deal with the constant threat of being eaten by other fish. They would not have any type of medical care. Now, none of us are fish doctors but if we notice something is wrong with our fish what are we going to do we're going to do our best to fix that problem which is something that they would never get in the wild they get better food that is prepared specifically for them the diet is top notch we go out there and we make sure we're getting premium foods for our fish but not only our fish but our dogs and our cats and our guinea pigs and everything else so they're given a better diet they don't have to be worried about getting eaten and their water is kept pristine because most of us in this hobby do our best to make sure that the water is right, which is not something that can be said about the wild. Not when you have sewers that drain into the rivers, not when you have people throwing contaminants in the water constantly, gasoline from boats and exhausts and everything else that goes into these lakes and rivers and oceans that never enter an aquarium. So the water is better, the food is better, and they don't have to be constantly looking over their shoulder to make sure that they're not going to get eaten by another fish. So I do believe that with fish specifically, they are better off in captivity. Now, is there some that are treated poorly? Absolutely. We have people that come in here all the time that have a bowl this big and they're like, I've had my goldfish in there for two years. We all know that's wrong, folks, but that is a small part of the population or the aquarium population very small part of it with dogs and cats and everything else there is this you do have your people that are operating dog fighting rings and do i believe that those people should be given the opportunity to sign a hundred million dollar nfl contract after they do that no i don't but that's not the majority of the people man i just i just yelled that's the first time i've ever done that i don't believe that those people should not be punished for what they do for but I also know that they are a very small part of the animal keeping world, the pet keeping world. So, you know, I, I am a firm believer in that one bad apple does not spoil the bunch. I don't think that most people are doing it wrong. If our dogs get sick, we take them to the vet. If they're in the wild, what vet is going to take care of them? If a fish gets its fins nipped off in the wild, who's going to take care of that? They're not going to be able to get sequestered into their own little medicated little spot so that they can heal. That doesn't happen in the wild. Now, other arguments can be made about, you know, the whole Shamu argument and all that. You know what? I can't bring up every single argument that's out there. Should a killer whale or orca or whatever Shamu is, should that be kept in a small pool? No, it shouldn't. But, again, that fish doesn't have to be worried about getting hit by a cruise ship that and I called it a fish that whale doesn't have to worry about contaminants in the water I mean there's so many things that I can talk about that 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 fish does not or will not ever be exposed to in captivity that it would be in the wild and all pets are that way as far as I'm concerned there are people out there that do a bad job of it and they make Places like PETA, they give them means of making a living because they are bad people and they do a bad job of keeping their animals. But not all of us are that way. And most of us believe, like I do, that an animal kept in captivity is given a better chance and lives a longer life 
and lives a healthier life if they are in my care rather than having to fend for themselves out there in the wild. So, you know, I agree with this article that fish should be kept properly. I do believe that there is a right way and a wrong way to do it when it's concerned with any animals. But I can't agree with an article, I can't endorse an article that wants to put me out of business. And like I said, I've had friends that have literally, they, they've tried to put out of business. And these are operations that are cream of the crop. So, you know, I can't agree with this article. Some parts of it, sure, but not the whole thing. Um, and I don't know what more really I can say about it. I've already got raised my voice. I've already gotten through all of my points. I hope that uh, I haven't offended too many people. And again, I believe that there is a need for an organization like PETA. But I do believe that some of the stuff that they put out there is a little crazy. I admit I get teary-eyed every time one of those Sarah McLaughlin commercials come, comes on. And I know that's the SPCA, not PETA, but you know, they're, they're after the same thing. I mean, I'm with you when it comes to wanting animals to be treated properly. But I believe that a lot of these animals that you talk about are treated better in captivity than they are if they had to fend for themselves in the wild. So that's what I got for you folks. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Jim Snyder for sending me that article and getting me all fired up like this. Um, again, the article is in the description below. Take a look at it, see what you think, and hopefully I haven't offended too many people. We'll see you on the next video.